know when he gave the keys to Simon Peter after his resurrection you know why because at the last supper at the last supper when he was sitting with his 12 disciples the Lord said it is written about me written meaning it is prophecy prophecy means the Word of God the Word of God means never lies it is written about me the shepherd shall be striked and the sheep will scatter that means God never lies I will be striked ie I'll be crucified and all of you will deny me and run away Simon jumped out of the 12 and he said I will never deny you Simon it is written about me this is the word of God Simon no I will be with you till the end till death I'm with you he said now you blew your chances totally away Simon tonight before the rooster crows you will deny me three times Simon denied him three times Simon went outside cried like a baby seeking the Lord's mercy and forgiveness the Lord waited until he rose from the dead the first person the Lord calls to him after resurrection Simon Peter the one and only Habib Albi he said Simon come here he's trembling he's shaking he's probably saying inside of himself now the Lord Jesus is gonna wipe the floor with me he's gonna shred me to pieces he will humiliate me in front of everyone shame on you Simon you denied me before a woman you at least if it was a man a soldier a Roman so a woman Simon great man you are brother in front of a woman Simon come here Simon came yes Lord Simon son of Jonah do you love me what what kind of question is that I thought you were gonna shred me Simon do you love me he said I get it Lord I learned my lesson but the hard way but at least I've learned my lesson thank you Lord the teacher of all teachers Lord you know you know that I love you three times the Lord asks him the same question do you love me he's and the same answer Simon replies with Lord you know that I love you in the last supper I will not deny you in the last supper Simon put himself before the Lord Jesus he is not worthy of the keys because any church leader that puts himself before the Lord Jesus must fall even if you are the highest rank in the church you're nothing if you put yourself before the Good Shepherd the head of the church so he learned his lesson in the Last Supper, I, Simon, will not deny you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He put himself before the Lord. He denied him before a woman, not a man. What a fall. He learned his lesson. So the Lord asked him, he said, Simon, do you love me like you did in the Last Supper? You put yourself before me. I'll ask you the same way. Do you love me? Say, Lord, no, no more, no more. I surrender. You know that I love you. I'll put you before me. When the Lord saw that Simon had learned his lesson, then he said, here's the keys. Now you're a good boy. Now you can look after my flock because when you place Jesus Christ before you, then you're a successful leader. You did not reveal yourself to people. You revealed your Messiah to people. Now you are worthy to be a leader in my church. Wow. Not we have the keys. Excuse me. Stop lying. If you put yourself before the Lord Jesus, you, you don't even have the key to open a sardine can. 
He can't even open it, let alone the kingdom. <laughs> Whoa, baby. <laughs> Enough. So what, I'm a bishop, so what? Just because the Lord put me on this. I don't even want to call it a throne, but for his sake, because it's his. Just because the Lord Jesus put me on this, on his throne, that doesn't mean I'm in charge. The Lord will always be the head and all of us from the Pope to the smallest laity of all laities, all of us are the body. We are not the head, but it's the grace of the Lord Jesus that called us leaders in the church. But the true leader and the only head to this body is Christ because the body doesn't have more than one head and that head will always be Christ the King. Not the Pope, not the Bishop, not the Cardinal. All of us are body to that head. And when I as a leader make myself the head, the Lord won't even let me be the tail, not the body. I won't see him in the end. I'll be gone with the wind without a trace. You see Caiaphas, the high priest, Caiaphas, the equivalent of Caiaphas of the New Testament is the patriarch or the Pope. That's the equivalent of Caiaphas. The high priest. One of the historians by the name of Moshein, he writes, he says, after the Lord Jesus had ascended to heaven, the very priests of the temple, his own priests, grabbed their high priest, their pope, they grabbed him and they threw him out of the temple. They kicked him out because he is worthy of this reward, this payment. You go against the Lord Jesus, he was cast out and he said, till today, we do not know how he died, where he died or where he was buried or where his whereabouts gone, never to be heard of, to be seen ever again. This is the end of a leader that says, I am the head of the church, not Christ. The only time the keys will work is when you adhere to the Lord's word not your own empty head. And when the Lord says, whatever you tie on earth shall be tied in heaven and whatever you loosen on earth shall be loosened in heaven, the Lord Jesus gave this authority to the priesthood rank for one reason. He says, I want you to loosen my children from Satan and tie them to me, I the Lord Jesus. You loosen my children from Satan release them from Satan and tie them onto me. Not loosen them from me and tie them onto Satan. This is the keys. I put you there to save souls, not to destroy them. Because your master, your head, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, did not come to kill, but to revive what was killed. I came to give life, not to destroy it. I came to save, not to lose. I came to build, not to destroy. So when I put you in my place, I expected you to do the same thing as your master Jesus. Loose them from Satan, set them free from Satan, and cling them onto Christ to give him life. But when we buy and sell, the reason when we buy and sell is when we let people love us, not God. Then I'll be the center of attention. Oh, Bishop, we love you. Oh, Bishop, there's none like you. Oh, thank you. Oh. And the Bishop says, whatever you need, I'm always here for you. Anything and everything you need. Don't worry. God gave the keys to me. You just come to me, leave God to me. Don't worry. Mm. No wonder the church is in turmoil. Because there's a lot of buying and selling in the house of God, the Father. Love is missing. 
We keep on calling each other brothers in Christ, but it is a lip service, nothing from the heart. If we were true brothers in Christ, why are we living in hell? Christ is heaven. Christ is life. Christ is the light of the world. Christ is beauty. Christ is everything beautiful. Why are we so lost, so confused, so blind, so destroyed? Gone. Why? If there was true love in the church, why is the church in ruin? Because we stole the love from God. And we took the credit as church leaders. The king's image gets printed on the coin. And God, the king of all kings, his image is printed on the human who is that coin for God. The day we remove God's image and we place our own image, we become God on earth, the false God. And that's when we destroy the church, destroy life and everything beautiful God gave us. Look at the church, look at the world. Absolute destruction. Crazy. Man. You know, it's very funny what's happening, but in a sad way. Very funny what's happening in the world, but in a very sad way. Why? Because they're godless. The world has no, well actually has a god, a false god called Satan. Satan came nothing but to kill, destroy divide and conquer that's satan's role he kills destroys he divides in order to conquer the lord jesus came to unite to build to give life and with life he gave us identity which is our dignity look at the human being now distant from god they want to call themselves an it. Next time, that it will say, I want to marry another it. And that other it happens to be a dog. Yeah, no, it's not funny. It's sad. But that's reality. Because you see, when you go with Satan's imagination, it leads to absolute destruction. Absolute destruction, crazy, sick, immoral, inhumane. What is this? It's gone too far. It's too sick to even fathom it as being real. I don't want to imagine that it's real. What happened to the human element? The moment we lose God, we lose our humanity. We lose our humanity. The church needs to be searching for the Father's love, not for thrones and power. Love. True, genuine love. When I say it in your face, I love you, I need to be the same way behind your back. Not in your face one thing, behind your back totally another thing. That is not love. That is deception. We need to be genuine. True, genuine people loving one another in the love of God the Father. When we love one another, we will never judge one another. And even if we judge, our judgment will be based on love. Then with it will come absolute humility, tenderness, kindness, and mercy. My judgment will be based on love. I'll say, I am crying because I see you, brother, a little bit distant from the Lord. 
I have begged the Lord Jesus to bring you back to him even if it means he strikes me let him strike me just for you to come back to his bosom once again that is a true brother one thing goes with love I know I talk a lot where there is love there is no time say that again where there is true love there is no time what do I mean by this when you are sitting with the love of your life the last thing you want to do is to look at your watch and see what time it is because you will never do that why because you don't want time to take you away from your sweetheart so when you have love for God the Father then your service for his children is not based on time. There is no time. So you come to me anytime, all the time. Not sorry, it's 5 p.m. <laughs> I signed off. I'm a priest. I work from 8.30 to 4.30. You come 4.35, sorry. Are you an employee or are you a father? When you are a true father, you don't have this schedule with your child. Your child will come to you whenever they need you, regardless what time it is. Even if I am extremely exhausted, but when my child needs me, I don't care about my exhaustion. I care about the well-being of my child. I will jump and I will run just to make sure my child is safe and sound. This is the way the Lord wants to happen in the house of his daddy. Not sorry, I don't have the time for you. Then that place is not for you. Resign, brother. Find another job. Because working in the house of the Lord is not a job. It is life. Working in the house of the Lord is not a job. It is life. You don't, use, you don't look at the watch. You don't look at the schedule and you start ticking. Yes, no, yes, no, 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 it's life. Do you think about breathing? No. Do you think... Do you, do you think about how many times you, 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 breathe, you breathe this uh, today? No, it is life. You just live it. You don't think about how many times you've inhaled and exhaled. It comes natural. This is the way it should be in the house of the Lord. When there is true genuine love, I don't look at the time. I look at you as my brother in Christ. Because I love you. So whatever time it is, brother, no problem. Four Sundays, I'll leave you with it. Four Sundays, our church fathers called it sanctification of the church. The first Sunday, the reading is from the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 16. In Matthew chapter 16, that's the first Sunday. Do you want to be sanctified by the Lord Jesus? Do you want to be seen as perfect in the eyes of the Lord Jesus? You need to follow these four Sundays. The first Sunday, the reading is from Matthew 16. What happened in Matthew 16? The Lord Jesus takes his 12 apostles to a place called Caesarea of Philippi. Caesarea. Caesarea of Philippi. Caesarea of Philippi. What happened in this place prior? Caesar himself brought his four sons into the same place. And he divided his kingdom between his four sons. Each one got one portion of his kingdom. So what happened in that place? Division. The Lord Jesus took his 12 disciples to a place where division took place. Why division happens? Because of the throne. Each one wants a throne for themselves. No, I want this portion. No, I want that portion. Don't send me to a little village 
with a small congregation. I want the biggest city with the biggest followers because I, my throne, I want it to be the greatest. Throne gives me image, prestige, power, wealth. I want to conquer. If a church leader has a million followers, another one has a billion followers, and I have 10 people of followers, man, I'm a nothing. Who wants to be a nothing? No, everybody wants to be something. So the Lord took him deliberately, deliberately to a place where division happened because of throne. And then he asked them the pivotal question, what do men say about me? I, the son of man, Simon, good old Simon, baby. Simon said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. 